So does your car sound like this? If so, then you likely have a aftermarket clutch that removed the dual mass flywheel and exchange it for a single mass flywheel. The OEM flywheel of the Toyota Supra was a dual mass design, and with this design, it can dampen all the vibration from the engine and prevent those vibrations from being transmitted through the rest of the drivetrain. From my knowledge, there is no aftermarket clutch available for the Toyota Supra that uses a dual mass flywheel. All the aftermarket clutches will come with a single mass design. Now, a single mass flywheel is usually cheaper than the dual mass design. Now, the problem with going from a dual mass flywheel to a single mass flywheel is now there is no way to dampen the vibrations from the engine. So now all the vibrations from the engine can now be transmitted through the rest of the drivetrain. Now in the case of the Toyota Supra with the V160, it is a very noisy transmission. So now that you have all the engine vibration being transmitted through it, it becomes even louder. Now to prevent the transmission from making this noise, there's really only two ways to solve it. Either put the dual mass flywheel back on, which most aftermarket clutches aren't compatible with, or you can raise the idle speed. Because pretty much this issue is really only at idle. There must be a resonance frequency within the transmission that is very close to the stock idle of a Toyota Supra. So if you can raise that idle up just a little bit, you can pretty much eliminate all the noise the transmission will make. Now, if you're running a multi-disc clutch like I am in my Supra, raising the idle still will not prevent the car from making the rattle when the clutch is released. That's just the physical properties of releasing the pressure from the actual clutch discs themselves and then having them rattle against each other and the floater plate between them. So you can't eliminate that noise, which is this noise here. But you can eliminate this noise which honestly sounds terrible, especially when you roll up in a nice Supra and your car's making this noise. So how do you raise your idle? Now, if you have standalone, it's pretty easy. You go in there, a few keystrokes, and it's fixed. Now, if you have a stock ECU car like my car, it's a little bit more involved. So it's gonna involve adjusting the throttle stop screw and also recalibrating the throttle position sensor. So with some guidance from the Toyota Supra service manual, let me show you how to adjust the idle. So what you're gonna be adjusting is the throttle stop screw right here and then also the throttle position sensor right here so the first thing you want to do is which i'm not showing in this video is get your car up to operating temperature and then you want to adjust the idle stop screw you will need an allen key to adjust it and you kind of want to just you want to keep adjusting the screw opening up the throttle wider and wider until the transmission is not making any more noise normally if you raise your idle between 1000 rpms and 1100 1200 rpms that's usually high enough to quiet any chatter from the transmission so once you have the idle set where you're not having any noise coming from the transmission you can now take the car for a ride and see if when you let off the throttle if the injectors turn off or not so hopefully you have some kind of air fuel gauge so you can see this now if your idle only took a small adjustment you might not have to readjust the throttle position sensor at all but if you see that whenever you left the throttle, your injectors stay on, this dump fuel into your engine, then you'll need to go on to this next step, which is readjusting the throttle position sensor. So to adjust the throttle position sensor, you're gonna need a copy of the procedure within the service menu, which you really won't need if you follow this video. You'll need some kind of multimeter, and I have a wire that I stripped the sheathing off of and then attach that to the two prongs of the multimeter. You'll need a, you also need a very small Phillips head screwdriver. I didn't, I didn't have anything small enough so I kind of used my vice grips holding a Phillips head bit. And really you probably won't need that screwdriver I have in the middle. That was before I started and realized it was too long to use. So the first thing to do is locate your throttle position sensor which is on the intake manifold and just unplug the sensor. Now you want to get your little stubby screwdriver and then loosen up the throttle position sensor. There's gonna be two Phillips head screws holding it on. As you can see, it's a very tight spot, so a normal screwdriver just won't work. So 
So per the instructions, you want to insert your wire leads into the E2 and the IDL pin connections within the connector. You'll want to set your multimeter to ohms, which are the little horseshoe looking like symbol on there. So you'll want to set your multimeter so you can read a resistance of between 0.34 and 6.3 ohms. So as you can see here, I'm inserting my wire into the, the first pin and then also into the second pin, which are the E2 and IDL pins of this connector. The first time I did this, the wires popped out of the connector, so I had to reinsert them and put it back on. And then you'll know if you do this right, because on your multimeter, as you twist the throttle position sensor, you should see it showing resistance and then falling to infinite resistance. And then now you'll need some kind of feeler gauge. From what I've read, you can also use a matchstick if you don't have a feeler gauge. So you want to install the feeler gauge between the throttle position screw and the actual arm of the throttle body. And then you'll want to twist the throttle position sensor until you get the multimeter gauge to deflect. So once you think you have it set right, you can remove the feeler gauge and there should be resistance showing on your multimeter.
and then to check that it's working correctly you can reinsert the feeler gauge and it should deflect back to infinity. See, as you can see here, I put the feeler gauge back in and the multimeter is reading infinity. Pull it out, reading resistance. So once you have that done, you can snug up the screws on the throttle position sensor. Be careful not to spin the sensor as you're doing this because that's going to kind of screw up everything you just did. And that's all you need to do. Now you can take your car for a ride and make sure that the ECU is now turning off the injectors whenever you let off the throttle. And if it is, everything should be good to go. You can now go enjoy your much quieter Toyota Supra.